Well, hello everyone. Good evening from North Allerton. Uh, this is Sunday evening for you, although we are actually pre-recording this because while you're watching this, we're actually out preaching live for in, in Barnard Castle. And although I preached in Thirsk and North Allerton, this is my first journey away to preach. So I'm, I'm dead excited, actually dead nervous about it and excited about it at the same time because I'm driving more than 10 miles to go and preach. I normally travel to different parts of the world, but hopefully that'll come again. I'm looking forward to it anyway, so praise the Lord. Tonight we're uh, just Kathy and myself and the dogs. You'll hear them munching in the background. We've got a couple of hymns we're going to sing. Start off with, in loving kindness, Jesus came. It's from sinking sand, he lifted me. So join with us tonight and we'll have a good sing together and uh, just a quick look at the word and then share communion. So thank you for joining us. Let's see if we can get this, just you and me. Jemima's singing at a distance. You can't hear her, but she is singing that. <laughs> In loving kindness, Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim. And from the depths of sin and shame, through grace he lifted me. From sinking sand, Tender hand, he lifted me from shades of night to plains of light. Oh, praise his name, he lifted me. He called me long before I heard, before my sinful heart was stirred. But when I turned, of night to plains of light oh praise his name he lifted me his brow was pierced with many a thorn his hands by cruel nails were torn when from my guilt and grief forlorn in love he lifted His name, He lifted me. Now on a higher plane I dwell, and with my soul I know this well. Yet how wide I cannot tell. He should have lived. of night to plains of light oh praise his name let's do that last verse again since we missed it last time now on a higher plain I dwell and with my soul I notice well yet how or why I cannot tell His name, He lifted me from sinking sand. He lifted me with tender hands. He lifted me from 
shades of night to flames of light. O oh, praise his name, he lifted me. Yes, he did. He lifted. That's a good hymn, isn't it? That's wonderful. And I, I, I think back to when I gave my life to Jesus. I was around five years old and I knew I needed a saviour. I, I know I've said this before during our Sundays that we have to come to the point, whatever age we are, when we recognise we need a saviour. We cannot save ourselves. And I knew I'd been lifted. I knew for sure that Jesus reached down his hand and he lifted me into salvation and I've been thankful ever since. And that's over, getting on for 55 more years since I gave my Can't life to Jesus. Far. And I'm just glad every day I made that decision. He's a wonderful saviour. Yeah, and you can also find him today as your saviour. This is a lovely old song, and this, the, the words of it are just beautiful, but it's yeah. an old an old chorus that you'll know very well. And we'll start with the choruses. We can't, I can't get the beat right. Can <laughs> Kathy has to correct me all the time on the beat of this. As so. if. As, <laughs> yeah, right. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's sing that again. I'll get the beat then. Your eyes upon Jesus, the falling in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. O oh, soul, are you weary? light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth To life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Over us it no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Glory and grace, and again, turn 
wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace And the things of earth And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory Beautiful words, aren't they? They yeah. really are. Sort of finding at the moment the, the things of earth are strangely dim. But there you go. Are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> the things so, of earth are strangely dumb. Where are we going? <laughs> We're in Zachary. Just a few verses. This is a verse I wanted Cathy to read tonight just before we break bread together. Many of you have been following day after day in our daily verses. And it was a bit of an experiment this past week because I took a word, the word tikva which means hope. It's the cord that Rahab hung from her window that the two spies said, hang this from your window. When we come in, if when we see the cord, everybody's safe behind the cord. And so I've looked at five verses where this verse is finishing, they finished this morning. But this is actually one more that I want to just look at for a moment tonight as we take break bread together. It's from Zechariah chapter nine. <clears throat> and it says, and for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. For I have bent Judah my bow, fitted the bow with Ephraim, and raised up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and made you like the sword of a mighty man. Read the first two verses again, would you? Just listen to this as we break bread together. Some beautiful words. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I will declare that I restore double to you. Now, not incredible words. Wow. Talking about the blood of the covenant. Can I just read the other one for, from 1 Corinthians? Because we're going to break bread together. And I want to pull it all in as a, as a thought as we break bread today. And we read, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this as an, in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You know, it's a fantastic passage of scripture talking about communion and the blood that was shed. But in the passage that Jemaah... Uh, Jemaah. Kathy read from the book of Zechariah. It's, it's, it's also the word tikva. And he says, because of the blood of your covenant. So we're talking about a covenant blood. Every covenant was shed with blood. Because in the, in the Bible, when it talks about making a covenant, you know this, but I'm just reminding you. When it talks about making a covenant, in the original it says cutting a covenant. So a covenant was always cut with blood. Sometimes it was blood of animals, and sometimes between people it would be blood maybe from their wrist. But there was always a shedding of blood. And so in the new, in the new covenant, it was Jesus' blood, the blood of the perfect Lamb of God that was shed. But the promise that, that this tikva word, which is the hope, is he says, it says, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. In other words, there's freedom in the covenant. He says, return to the stronghold, return to the stronghold. You know, we used to sing that one about the, the, the name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. Sorry, Kathy, go and get the dog. It's Texas making noises. The name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. And many of you listening this evening, you've been doing that in this last year. Some of you have had to do it. And as I shared, I shared the other day, one of my, one of maybe it was it was last Sunday. I was so challenged last Sunday because we interview. I interviewed Solomon, and as I'd said to you last Sunday, those of you who weren't there, Solomon's one of my closest friends in the Ivory Coast but he was really ill and I didn't know it as a close friend I didn't know it but it had nothing to do with Covid 
and so because we're so obsessed with with COVID, we 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 um we forget all the other challenges that people are going through, and they were going through a real challenge. And here, these people are going through a real challenge. But God's prom- promise is, He says, because of the blood of the covenant, not because of your prayers or I guess they were praying of course they were and we're praying but it's not because of that that God acts because of the blood of your covenant I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit Mm. I'm going to give freedom to the prisoners so he says return to the stronghold the name of the Lord is a strong tower and many of you have run to that tower in this past year not just because of COVID some of you yes because of that but the majority not because of that it may have been related in some way but there have been issues that you've had to fight many of you issues in your body, physical illnesses and, and attacks that have come against mm. you. And you've run to the name of the Lord, your high and mighty strong tower. You've run to his name and he has blessed you. Here it says, return to the stronghold, you prisoner Sorry. of hope. And then he says, I declare to you, I will restore double to you. And so there's certain promises here. And in the middle of it is that word tikva, but it's an interesting little twist. You know, the Bible says that we are, we, we become slaves of Christ. Paul describes himself as a slave of Christ. We are slaves of something. You're slave to the person you serve. Once upon a time before Christ, we were slaves to the world. Oh, we said we were free. We can do what we want. I've had many people tell me that they were free and yet they're slaves to alcohol or to drugs or to whatever. Oh, no, I can do what I want. Well, actually, before you came to Christ, you were a slave to the world and you were set free by becoming a slave to Christ. And so that's the irony of it. Only when we come to Christ in John chapter 10, Jesus, you know, the, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, have it more abundantly. He says, I'm the gate of the sheep. Whoever comes in, in to me will go in and go out and find pasture and the picture is of of freedom to go in and go out you see the picture in Joshua chapter 6 of of Jericho where it says Jericho was tightly shut up because of the people of God and so we are slaves to Christ that makes us truly free but here the way that Zechariah describes it he says return to the stronghold you prisoner of hope Now, if you're going to be a prisoner, that's a good thing to be a prisoner of. A prisoner of hope. What is hope? Holding on, patiently expecting. That's what hope is, H-O-P-E. Holding on, patiently expecting the promises of God to work in your life. And that's what Rahab did. She hung tikva, this same word. She hung the cord, the red scarlet cord to her window. And every day she looked through the window, she saw everything as she looked past hope. And so today we have great hope. And as we break bread together, Mm. we come back to the blood covenant, a covenant that was made. Now we pray and we ask God to help us. And of course he does. But the reason he does it is because of the covenant, the blood that was shed. Never let us go far away from the blood. There was a time when a lot of the churches went through a, a taking away the hymns that had blood in them. They called it a butcher house religion. What a note of nonsense. The blood is what saves us. The blood is what speaks for me today. When God sees me, when I come to him, Jesus has made intercession for me. That means he takes the hand of the Father and he takes the hand of of me and he brings us together through the blood. He's not praying. Now, there is another verse that talks about Jesus praying for us, but ultimately that's not his role today to pray for us. His role is to make intercession for us, which means he brings God the Father and he brings us together and he says, right, you're meeting through the blood. And the Bible says when Jesus sees us, he sees the blood and the blood speaks for us. Do you see how powerful that is? And you and I, we are prisoners of hope. That means we can't get away from hope. Everywhere we go, we have hope in front of us, holding on, patiently expecting, knowing that the promises will work out in our life. If you're sick this evening, hold on to hope that you will not be sick forever, but that you will be healed. If you're without a job tonight, hold on to hope that God will provide the perfect job for you. If you're if you're sick in your mind tonight, if you're depressed about what's going on, hold on to hope, knowing that Jesus will touch you. If you're bound in any other way, hold on to hope. 
as we break bread together and remember that Jesus died for us. He gave us wonderful promises. And you know the Bible says, Paul says in Corinthians, it's amazing. He says every promise. What does it say about it, Catherine, in it's Corinthians? Yes, yes and amen in Jesus. It's yes and amen. And the NIV, well, I don't always go to the NIV, but it translates it in a lovely way. It says in, in the King James or in the New King James, it's yea and amen in Jesus. But in, in the NIV, it says the promises there, yes, but are to yes is spoken by us. To the glory of God. And it's a wonderful way of saying it because we can't heal anybody, we can't provide for anybody, we can't change anybody's life, but we can say amen to the, word. To the promises of God. Yeah. And that's what we're saying that Tikva, it's the promises bound together of God. And so as we break bread together, Kathy and I, and we thank, by the way, the, the dogs sit here because they like <laughs> these crackers and so they think they're going to get fed as well, but we're not feeding them, not your communion anyway. So let's thank God for this. Lord, I thank you. That your body was broken for us. And because of that, I have hope. Kathy and I have hope. All of us here this evening, we have hope because your body was broken for us in Jesus' name. Let's Amen. eat together. And we take the cup, and the cup reminds us of the blood that speaks a better word. Than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel speaks revenge. It, it's when Cain killed Abel. Abel's blood spoke revenge from the ground. Getting even. We see that all around us. We see it in government. We see it in. Particularly in the high. Some of this. The incredible stuff that comes out. And we see it all around us. But that's not what God does. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus turned it all around. Kingdom living. Is a servant living. And so when we see the, the, the blood. The blood speaks not revenge. Not revenge on the people who kill Jesus, but speaks forgiveness. Forgive them, Lord, for they don't know what they're doing. The thief on the cross, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. We are prisoners of hope who love Jesus. And so tonight we have hope. And I pray you share together with us as we drink this. Lord, I pray as we touch this tonight, we take this juice Lord, may it be to each one of us the hope that we need in Christ, holding on to your promises, patiently expecting you to bring us through. In Jesus' name, let's drink together. Amen. Amen. How wonderful. Well, we're not, as you know, we're not live tonight, but I do want to pray for a few people. Jenny in, uh, in India. Jenny's really been in a lot of pain this week with sort of arthritic pain in her joints. I want to pray that God will touch her. I want to continue to pray for Keith as he waits results over there in Lanzarote. Keith Masseter. And we want to pray for a friend of ours in, in Living Waters Fellowship yeah. over in uh, Texas, in, in Texas, in the US. Mary, Mary Beth Haas. And she's had a, a sort of bad news from a, 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 a lump and that's cancerous and is, is facing chemotherapy. And we want to pray. She knows that Jesus is her healer. And many people are lifting her up before the Lord. And, and we want to pray that God would do a miracle in Mary Beth's life this evening. So we're going to lift these three and include yourself with us if, if you want to, uh, you need a touch as well. So Lord, we just lift, we lift Jenny to you over there in India and Sam. I pray you'd touch Jenny in her joints this evening. And I pray that she'd be free from pain in Jesus name. Touch her, Lord. Let her be a prisoner of hope tonight, holding on to you. Pray for Keith over in Lanzarote. Lord, we pray as he awaits results and looking what the future is. Lord, I pray he'll hold on patiently expecting the promises of God to work through in his life. Bless him and Kathy there. We pray for Mary Beth over there in Quitman in Texas. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless her and you will touch her, Lord. And David, Lord, I pray you'll, you'll do a miracle in her life. She's holding on to you as her healer. And so, Lord, as Mary Beth is a prisoner of hope tonight, let that cord, that, that hope, that, that tying and binding together of the promises of God, that I am the Lord that heals thee. Lord, I pray that those promises will stir around in her body and in her mind and cause tremendous hope to be raised up tonight and bring healing, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray for each one that's joining with us tonight. That Lord you will bless them. And that you will move upon them. I pray for the folk in Barnard Castle. That you will bless them tonight. And I pray Lord for a tremendous sense of the expectation of what God is going to do. That Lord Jesus we all through a covenant of blood through Jesus. That we become prisoners of hope. 
And Lord, I pray that you will restore double everything that's gone wrong. You will restore. As many people say, double for our trouble. That God, you will do something good in each one's life tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you. This is just, a li- as you know, we're live at the moment. We're doing it uh, for your today, which is our yesterday. We are doing it yesterday for you and Saturday. But it's live. We haven't edited this. And so it's just straight up. That's why you've heard the dogs. I'm not taking out the barking. It's just the way it is. But we pray that God has blessed you tonight and that you'll hold on. Never give up on hope. Never give up on the word of God. The word of God is what changes everything. And we thank God for it. So I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another word. It comes on about 7 o'clock on the communion in the small world page. And then I share it on the other page soon after that. And I pray that will be a blessing to you this week. And I'll be back with you again next week. So have a wonderful time. And the Lord bless you, will you? Bless you. Bye-bye.